It's Mark and Paulette here from the Two Travelers in Mexico, and today was a very special day for us. It was, um, in two ways. In two ways, exactly. October 21st is our anniversary, and it happens to be our at the anniversary, our 11th anniversary. Uh, and we went down um, to INM, and we got our residency status changed. I became a permanent resident. Mm -hmm. of Mexico and Paulette extended her uh, resident visa for three more years uh, primarily so that um, we can keep our car here for three more years because it's a USA plated car so that's why she stayed on a temporary visa yep so in order for us to um, pay for our fees for INM we were given two forms for me that had two different amounts on them, which um, the forms also had the, uh, like a bank account number, a government bank account number. So I took those forms to the bank and I paid those two. And for that, I was given a receipt from the bank. Um, and then I took a copy of the receipts and we took them to INM so that they would know that I had paid the money right. into those two accounts. Right. And the fee was six thousand five hundred and seventy one pesos for me. It was actually cheaper for me to become permanent than yeah. it was for Paula to extend her temporary residency for three more for th years. For three years, yeah. For me it was um eight thousand one hundred and six and six pesos, pesos uh, which amounted to about three hundred and eighty US dollars. Now, yes. remember, you know, roughly the peso does change in Mexico on a daily basis. So right. just dollar, letting you know. Yeah, the, the dollar to peso exchange rate does change. So as of October 21st, 2020, uh, that was the amount in U.S. dollars that we had to pay. Right. Um, I was going to say something else, too. Oh, and I only had one form uh, for that one dollar amount that the deposit was made for that also at the bank and you get your receipt and you make sure that you know that that goes with you to mm -hmm. like mark said i n m um, so that they know that the money the fees were already paid by the time that you get there to do your visa process right and always verify the account number on the form that I, we were given from i n m with the account number that the bank says that they processed it to it, they should match up exactly. And another thing is you always want to make sure that the spelling of your name is correct. correct. Because if for some reason it's not, mm -hmm. you're going to have issues. So, you know, when you're given back <clears throat> the receipt from the bank, you want to make sure that you go over your name, all the letters are correct. Um, and that the account numbers are correct mm -hmm. also where that money was deposited into. Right. And what we've experienced here is that when they ask for your name, they actually want your first name, middle name, and last name. Um, so that's, that's how they do business with you. It's like your middle name becomes part of your first name. But that was required, well, all the stuff that was required from me uh, today at INM is I had to have my passport, two copies of my passport. I had to have my temporary residency card uh, and I believe two copies of that. Two copies, yeah. Right. And then I also... Um, had your had, croup. Right. Copy. I, I also had to have a copy of my croup number. Additionally, I had to show six months worth of bank statements um, so that I could prove that I had at least $2,035 of income coming in each month from my pension. Now that $2,035, uh, it could vary depending on the state that you were getting your temp, getting your permanent residency in, but that's what I had to prove here in Moralia. Now for me, I needed the same requirements as Mark did, except I did not have to show the six months worth of bank statements um, for a pension because I'm not going to permanent. As, as a extension for my temporary residency, I just had to come up with those same documents that Mark did. Um, so 
Yeah, uh, I'm like Mark said, I needed to do a temporary residency still because I, we still want to keep our vehicle here. Now the fees that it cost me was 8,106 pesos, which is roughly 380 US dollars as of today, subject to change with the peso. So just keep that in mind. And uh, I needed to come up with everything that Mark had to come up with except for the six months showing a pension because on a temporary you don't have to show that permanent you do have to show a pension coming in for at least six months and the other thing is is if you are like us and don't speak the language very well um, you're probably gonna have to hire somebody that does um, immigration or a lawyer or something like that who does this sort of work for you which we ended up doing the first time and the second time. Um, so keep that in mind. The fee, I'm sure, can vary from person to person. We paid about 7,750 pesos, which is about $364 to have this done for us. So one of the new changes is that if you, all your paperwork is in order, you leave the INM office that day with your new green card, whether it's temporary or permanent resident. That's if you have all of your paperwork in order. We paid a fee and the fee was uh, 7,750 pesos. That also included my tip, which is my temporary import permit that needs to also get sent to Mexico City to hook up with my temporary uh, residency. Right. Visa. And to be to be clear about this, we, we did pay the tip at the, the vehicle registration tip at the border. Um, this person that we hired now is just following the process of getting the tip attached to Paulette's visa. So um, it's good for three years instead of, um, you know, the short amount of time that we had left on our on our temporary residency visas, right. which we only had about one month left when we started this process. Um, and like I say, we went in there today with all of our paperwork. Um, they took us into separate places. I went into an office. Um, the guy reviewed all of my paperwork, including my financial statements, um, our passports, our um, some of the other records that we had, uh, our Kirk number. Uh, and then he went on to his computer and did a lot of work. Uh, and then about um, oh, an hour later, they took new pictures, um, which Paulette hasn't experienced with that because they want to see your forehead at all times in the <laughs> pictures. Uh, and then we, um, uh, he had me sign a couple of documents and electronically sign a thing that uh, that signature actually shows up on my printed mm -hmm. um, permanent residency card. He printed out the card, handed it to me right there on the spot, and now I'm good to go. Um, let me add to that too. <clears throat> There's also a little uh, um, for your for your thumbprints, a little machine. Yeah, that's right. I forgot to mention that. Sorry. He did. They took my fingerprints, um, not on both hands, four fingers at a time, and in this hand, and then both thumbprints at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's for the record, that does not show up on your Yeah, on that's your not card. on the card or anything like no. that, just so they can uh, fingerprint identify you later, I'm sure. Right, what shows up on your card is basically, um, like for Mark's, the day that he renewed it, which is today, showing permanent residency uh, mm -hmm. in, in Mexico. On mine, Mine shows temporal uh, residency, and it shows uh, three years from, uh, well, we had it, okay, like he said, we had one more month to go, so they did it a month early for us. So ours goes until like November 13th. Mine goes until November 13th, 2023, where his, your, his doesn't have a date on it. It's just mm -hmm. today's date, permanent. There's nothing else for him to do. The only thing that he will need to do and I'll need to do in the future is if we move, we need to um, give the update to INM yeah, anytime that you move. Right. Of our new address. Of our new address. 
And, and then again, my hair's back because you have to see your ears and you have to see your forehead. So I had a, like a bandana where I pulled my hair back and I had it tied back like this and that was not acceptable. They said, no bueno. No bueno, yeah, no good. So what I had to do is, because I was waiting for him to take my picture, is my hair was already sticking kind of up and back. So, so it worked out okay. Mm -hmm. It was good enough. And, and they do a, a, a right side profile, they do a left side profile, and they do a front picture. Mm -hmm. And what's very cool is as of this month, October 2020, uh, the process has changed where you leave it you leave the office with your with green your card, your green visa, card. whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. I call it a green card because it is green. Um, but yeah, so you leave with your temporal residency visa slash green card or your permanent, permanent residency, residency visa slash green card in your hand. You look over it though real good also to make sure that your croup number that they put on there is correct. Your birthday is correct. The spelling of your name is correct and the date is correct. Mm -hmm. And then on the back side, there's some codes and your signature. Yeah, in our case, we had no issues. Um, granted, hiring someone to do a lot of the work for us certainly made it easier, but it was pretty much a no sweat process for us today. I mean, we went in there, I answered a couple of questions, signed some forms. Um, oh, one other thing. Okay. One other thing that I wanted to mention is that there are some questions that you do have to answer, and there's like seven of them. One of them is like education level and in what studies. Um, the other one is religious beliefs, mm -hmm. um, number of children, your address, and like the cross streets, wasn't it? Like yeah. your cross streets. Yeah. Um, and then where you moved from, the city, the state, and the county. So the last question is your height, and that is in um, meters. Meters, and then your weight, which is in um, kilograms. Kilograms. The whole process today at INM took us uh, roughly an, an hour and a half. Paulette's process was quicker. Mine, uh, because it's a permanent residency, took a little bit longer. So there was more work that the uh, fellow at the INM office had to do. If you're new to our channel, thanks for checking us out. We'd appreciate it if you would take the time to subscribe to our channel if you like what we're doing. Um, additionally, we have a Facebook group called The Two Travelers in Mexico. Um, if you want to go ahead and join that group. On our Facebook page, we discuss more day-to-day -day stuff. Um, Paulette, we're not real estate agents, but Paulette posts uh, rentals on there just to give people an idea of you know, what it would cost to rent an apartment here in Mexico or perhaps even buy a house. Um, we post uh, different news articles about Mexico. Um, we've been posting uh, articles about the Mexico COVID-19 stoplight map to give you an idea of the, the each what each state color is and whatever we find um, in the Mexican paper that we subscribe to we post it there too mm -hmm. for your information